Hey guys, it's Bobby Legs and welcome to a Saturday live stream chat. Not my typical time, I usually do Fridays, um, but I have started doing some Saturday chats because I wanted to bring um, some some value to, to, to you guys as subscribers. Um, as you know, recently, um, well not recently, but uh, for a while now, I've been very, very interested in German watch making, and so um, I have brought in a couple of people who uh, who are who I would consider some some experts in German watch making. One being Axel from Watch Maxi, and he has done a couple of live stream chats with us. But I today we have a really special guest today. Um, now I uh, it, well Wolfgang, how are you? Uh, thank you for for coming yeah. on. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> And you know, before I, before I get into uh, uh, how I, I how we connected, uh, what do you have on wrist today? What are you wearing? Uh, actually, today I'm wearing my own watch. That's a Taucher, uh, but this is a prototype, of course. Um, this is one which I didn't publish yet on the <laughs> oh, okay to the, to the community because it has a uh, it has a cream. Oh, right. sure, yeah, oh. yeah. But yeah, I was not completely happy with the contrast, but I'm still wearing it because it's a prototype and I can test the watch what <laughs> how it feels. And um, I also have three other prototypes, but they are set, sent around the world currently and uh, they are stuck in customs or yeah. uh, one got lost between France and Germany. So I need to, <laughs> need to follow up on that. So yeah. all three watches are produced for the fixed data campaign are are lost at the moment, so I only have that one, but it's also nice. <laughs> yeah, very, very, very nice. I'm, I'm in, in celebration of, of you and, and my, my German friend. I am wearing my Gino, uh, series yeah, okay. forty, uh, classic, yeah, okay. um, okay. chronograph. Uh, I've discovered for myself the Gino about uh, last summer, and, uh, and I just thought that was, it was a great brand. So, so I'm fortunate to, to pick that one up. But uh, for the for you guys in the chat, thank you for coming. Uh, please, um, you know, give us a shout out in the chat. Let us know what you're wearing on wrist, and uh, we'll get started here now. Um, a few months back, uh, thumbing through, uh, looking through, uh, going down rabbit holes of, of watches, uh, as we all do, I, I come, ac I came across Heinrich watches. Uh, it was a, uh, a a huge campaign. I, I feel. I mean, I, you you got you did such a great uh, camp marketing campaign, Wolfgang. I got to tell you, uh, I was hooked mm -hmm. as soon as I saw the design, and uh, and we'll look at those uh, designs in a, in just a bit. Um, and and then so we started communicating, sort of a little bit, you know, and we became Facebook friends, and uh, and uh, so you know. Um, I'm glad that you're here, and 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 I want to get to know you. I want the people on the chat to get to know you, and then we're going to talk about um, Wolfgang's Kickstarter campaign. So, Wolfgang, um, please tell us a little bit about yourself, and and how did you get into watches? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so first of all, thanks for having me and for the invitation. Uh, very nice. Yeah, as you said, we had a quite early contact when I started the. Uh, uh, marketing campaign, I would say, for, for the Tower Watch. And uh, yeah, I think you actually approached me, were, were one of the first ones, yeah. <laughs> uh, straight after I landed on Watch You Seek. Yeah. Uh, this was, I think, three weeks after my first Instagram post. And then uh, yeah, I got some, some quiet awareness in, in the US. And I think you were one of the first ones who contacted me. So I think since July, we were a bit not mm -hmm. uh, constantly in contact, but yeah, this was uh, so uh, very nice. And so now we are here together. So yeah. Thanks again for the invitation. Yeah. Uh, just from my side, yeah. What? How did I come up with this? Yeah, it's a long story, but um, I try to keep it short. So yeah, I was born in the seventies, nineteen seventy-six, and yeah. I, uh, uh, I'm a German, of course, as you might hear from my accent, <laughs> um, <laughs> and grown up in the Black Forest. So you probably, oh, I, I know that you are no, no, <laughs> aware of cuckoo's clocks. Yeah, I, I have two, two, two cuckoo clocks. <laughs> so this is the area where where I grow up, actually, and uh, quite close also to Junghans, if you know this mm -hmm. band. Mm -hmm. uh, also coming from the Black Forest. 
So I lived there maybe 20 kilometers away. So I had uh, quite early contact with watches, cuckoo clocks. And yeah. <laughs> also uh, that time in the 80s, when I was uh, a youngster, 10 years old, so I started uh, collecting with Junghans watches. So they oh. produced that time quartz watches. And uh, then they struggled a bit uh, because, yeah, the quartz crisis came up and uh, I couldn't afford a, a mechanical watch from Junghans. Uh, that came later when I had a Max Bill. This is more like a Bauhaus style watch, so quite mm -hmm. simple. Um, and yeah, so I, I, what I wanted to say is that I got quite early in touch with watches. Um, so yeah, then I yeah, grew up, uh, did not much follow up on, the, on this topic and yeah, did my studies. Um, I studied uh, nothing with watches, so I studied business economics and media, uh, yeah, how do you say, media economics, so more in the TV area and mm -hmm. video production and stuff. And also a bit marketing and yeah, nothing to do with watches, but still this passion yeah, kept me on and <laughs> uh, I never let, let, let go of this. And um, yeah, so... Actually, the passion really came back when I was 35 or so. Now I'm uh, 44 already. And yeah, I, I thought about how could it be to, to really start my own brand, you know, uh, just found a watch brand. I had my, my normal job as a project, uh, <laughs> project leader and uh, in, in the IT area and still, still having this. So I started like, yeah, like a hobby project and just to check how this goes because I was really passionate to to have my own brand because I saw some some good potential um, to to create a German like micro brand. Um, and uh, the first brand I created it was uh, or is still a project is still ongoing or is still alive. Uh, it is called Tastemakeup.watch. You can see it's still on the website. Um, but yeah, this is more like in the segment of a, of a fashion brand because I needed to start um, yeah, with a low budget, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I, I went for a quartz watch first and uh, also more in the segment of, of uh, yeah, in the fashion area, I would say. It has like, like some bohos uh, homage to it, but yeah, it was not a, a mechanical movement inside it. But they are still made in Germany label. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. So, so before we get ahead of ourselves, I mean, this, so this is interesting because I, I didn't know this part about mm -hmm. your, your story. So, you know, definitely we have some commonality here. You know, we're both seventies. Uh, we grew up in the eighties. Um, you know, you, you were interested in Jung Hans because it was your local brand pretty much. Uh, me G-Shocks yeah. because they had could just come out, right. You know, and the squares and whatnot. Um, I too started rediscovering the passion for watches um, in in my 30s, in my mid 30s. So I definitely have a lot of identification. Yeah, identif a lot of definite uh, uh, um, identification there. What I find interesting, and I think you just you blew it over a little bit, but you know the you decided that one day it was like you know the passion is there. I want to create a brand like, you know, you may, you make it seem like, Oh yeah, I just did. But that takes a lot of, that's brave. That's a, that takes a lot of guts to do because you're, you're not in the watch industry, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're in media, right? You're, you're, you're project managing or whatever you're doing. Um, so it's not related to, to watchmaking. So you are coming out, out of this, for, like somebody with with no background or experience, and I find that very very amazing. You must have, you must have some sort of like entrepreneurial spirit in you, uh, because that takes a lot. That that is a huge step to do. Um, so so I didn't know realize you, you had started another brand before and it was a quartz brand. Was that also a, a dive watch type brand or or what? Uh, no. Uh, it's like a yeah. Can we check a website here or how does it? Yeah, ab ab absolutely, absolutely. Let me um. So keep so keep talking and I'll I'll bring it up. Uh, what what is the website? Uh, so Tastemaker dot watch, but it's only a German website. So, but you can see the pictures to how this watch looked like. So it's not a dive watch. It's like um yeah, like a more like a fashion dress watch or something. I would call it. Uh, yeah, let me you, you find it. 
and yeah, to, I'm still uh, yeah, this brand is still alive. So I'm I'm just having two brands at the moment, <laughs> and uh, yeah. you you find it or can I paste yeah, it in yeah. the chat? I'm, uh, um, I'm here. I'm sorry. Let me just. Uh... Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, so is it T A S K? Taste like taste, uh, oh, and then maker. Maker. Yeah, and dot watch. Okay. Uh, just bear with me. Yeah, I, I can't seem to be able to load it. Uh, it might be the extension to dot watch is coming up on. Uh, it's giving me an issue on my firewall. Um, okay, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. But, but go ahead, pr proceed, please. Yeah, exactly. So this is still, yeah, it, this was targeted uh, mainly for the German market. So the website is German only as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, this was so the first encounter or the, the first entrepreneurial step I, I took towards watches. And yeah, but I always wanted to also make mechanical watches because this is, of course, more fascinating. Of course, what is nice, but you need to exchange the battery every two years, and yeah, uh, it's <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, uh, yeah, mechanical watches are of course a level higher. So, yeah. so now, so so you you come out with this watch. Um, you, I assume you 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 maintain some sort of success with it, right? I mean, or at least you gain some uh, sort of experience. No. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, just I still sell them and they uh, mm. are still produced. Uh, yeah, um, so it was uh, a success. But uh, yeah, based to the name, I made maybe some some errors. It's it's not a quite a, a global brand, I would say. And uh, so it was mainly uh, yeah distrib uh, bought in Germany. Mm -hmm. and, uh, this was also the initial idea because I just wanted to test in a yeah in a small market. Yeah. If it works or not, if I can do this at all, so not to to fail in a, on a global scale. Sure. And yeah, but it, it works quite well, and uh, yeah, I had some money out of that, of course, and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, started to 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 create uh, a second brand a few years later now, which which is the Heinrich watch. Or yeah. Heinrich, you yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. So not only do you have a passion for for watchmaking, but you do have also a passion um, for diving, right? Um, and this yeah. is something that, that that you're interested in, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and and how and and now did that influence your direction with Heimrich? Like, did, was that the main influence of, of coming out with a diver first? Mm, yeah. Okay. This was one point. I'm uh, yeah. I'm a scuba diver, or yeah, like. Not a professional one, but a hobby diver. So I yeah. have a, a usual paddy license, and I was uh, diving before COVID <laughs> in, in uh, all over the world in Asia, Thailand, Bali, wow. um, Mexico, uh, yeah, and where else? Ah, Egypt. I was yeah, in all around the world. Uh, Mexico was, I think, the most impressive for me. And yeah, so I also had some some diving experience and uh, passion for that but uh, actually diving watches was always something which what was fascinating to me uh, not only because of the rolex submarine or something mm -hmm. more i was more interested uh, i still can remember when i was 10 or so i also see saw the first diving watches but they were quite expensive for me so I needed to go with the Junghans Quartz for 200 Deutschmarks that time. <laughs> and uh, diving watches were too expensive, but they were quite, yeah, for me, masculine and uh, yeah. Yeah, just uh, another level. And uh, so I was very quite influenced with the Taucher by certain brands from the 70s, like Bulova, um, uh, what else? Yeah, Omega, of course, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm more aiming for, for some, yeah, more the 70 brands, not the, the mainstream brands, but yeah, Citizen is quite a good one. Um, Doxa, which you know probably, of course. And, yeah, uh, yeah, these, of course. 
these kind of trends which which came up in the 70s and are now quite popular still but uh, mm -hmm. they, they all grew in the in the 70s and it was uh, my ambition for for the for also for the project for Heinrich to um, yeah, to, yeah. To have some some homage to it but not create another homage watch that's that's not what I wanted to to because there are so many submarine or homages out there. Yes. And I didn't want to go that way. So I really tried, uh, as you can see, hopefully uh, to, to, to bring, own, bring in my own, uh, my own yeah, influence there, but uh, and not copy something out of the box. So uh, there are certain influences in this watch, which you can see, but also a lot of uniqueness, which I try to achieve. And yeah. This is <laughs> this was the whole concept idea of it. Yeah. So, so the concept comes first, then, right? So you have this idea of what you want the watch to be, to represent, um, to look like. Um, do you put um, pen to paper? Do you start drawing it out? Um, and 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 you do this all on your own. Do you have? Do you, are are you getting help? Um, from anyone, a, a designer or anything, or is this just all you? Um, you know, not all on me, but the initial idea is, of course, of course, coming from me. So, yeah, I have a, on my iPhone, I think, uh, let's see, uh, let's see, uh, maybe four, four to five thousand watches on my, <laughs> on my iPhone. So, as as uh, I just did the usual way, like uh, browsing the internet, and uh, yeah check what what is out there mm -hmm. and bookmark them on my iphone and then uh, this was the first thing this took quite a while and then uh yeah, trying to to come up with my own sketch on paper yeah so that's how i started with pencil and paper yeah fascinating. And, um, then um yeah in the middle of the project of course i get uh, support but i have my own idea how i want to have the watch look like so this is this needs to come up to from only one person, in my opinion. If you have a micro pant and you have the best, uh, all the chances to not getting influenced by some other people, mm -hmm. if you are not a big brand, you have everything. That can, can be a challenge, but it is also quite a good opportunity to to bring really your ideas, uh, yeah, in, out there. And of course, you always have. Uh, Feedback from other people, but I think for watches, it's quite, it's all a matter of taste. And there are so many, like you get so many feedback if you put out the first draft or whatever. And yeah, the difficulty is that you don't uh, get off your way and uh, make a monster out of it or Frankenstein. So really try to keep to, 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 to your, uh, your, your idea, which you had initially. Yeah. This is what I really try to, to do. Um, because I also, uh, had posts on, on a German Uhr forum. This is a watch forum like what you see in Germany. Mm -hmm. and yeah, there was quite good feedback, but also critical feedback. For example, as you can see here, I don't have any minute markers uh, on the on the dial, which is uh, quite unusual for a driver watch. So um, yeah, but in my opinion, the, the design only works if you don't, for this model, it doesn't work with, with minute markers. I tried it to get, uh, to I tried several options, did A B, A B C testing and so on. So but this was the, the most satisfying for me because I wanted to have really bold markers as you can see and really have a like a vintage vibe on it. And yeah, this minute markers it would be too much. So there was some feedback, but yeah, I, I needed to live with that and uh, I just tried to follow my way. <laughs> uh, of course this is a risk, but uh, yeah I'm yeah, I can look myself in the mirror and say, "Yeah, this is what I wanted." And yeah. now, now th this would this one right here. This is the 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 green dial. I am not a, a green dial person, but when this is the first watch I saw that you posted, I, I don't know if it was the first one that you uh, first colorway that you posted, or you posted the the black, blue, and green all together at once. I don't know what it was, but I saw my first experience was with this image, and I was just blown away. I was like, you know what? This is the one for me. I want this one. Sure enough, and we'll talk about it later, you came up with different color schemes. And I was like, whoa, I started doubting myself. I was like, okay, maybe I'll change. But you, I went back to this one because this is the one that grabbed at me the most. Why, why, why green? Um, 
-hmm. The safe pick would have been uh, just yeah. black and white, perhaps. But why green as well? Yeah, uh, yeah, so you are completely right. So this was the first, this one way which you show here. This was the real first, uh, yeah, prototype I, I I had in mind and drafted. It was the first color. So the vintage markers really, yeah, they are quite orange already. So mm -hmm. they are quite popping into <laughs> a bit into, into into your face. Yeah. So not everyone likes this, but um, yeah, and the green gave quite a good contrast, as you can see here. Uh, to the to the markers, I, I really like the green one for, for my side as well. But there's also now some other the Burgundy I really like, and yeah, the flag is also cool. But flag is more like uh, yeah, not so much popping. Uh, so the green, yeah, how did I come up with green? I really like the color. If it's if you have a sunburst style and the green really shines, pretty pretty nice. Uh, the black is not so sunbursty, so it's more like, yeah. And uh, if the sun hits the light of the green one, it's, it comes really out cool, I would say. And, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and yeah, it also has some, yeah, maybe a, I wanted to have a German trend, and uh, <laughs> green is also like a bit of, <laughs> uh, yeah, a field watch color, maybe. Right. Uh, so I wanted to combine uh, diver and some 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 uh, some uh, ideas from from a field watch. <laughs> so that's why I came up with a tank green color, yeah. I would say, like a German tank. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I, I want mean, to go into German history, but yeah, this is <laughs> I, I thought it fits quite well to to a German brand. And, uh, well, it works for me so because because uh, I loved it. I loved it um, as soon as it came out, and and I was like, you know what, I could, <laughs> like, I, and I, I think I, I emailed you a couple times. I was like, when is, when can I, when can can when can we purchase these things? You know, when is it going to happen? And he's like, oh my god, no, we're working yeah. through it, we're working through it, and uh, yeah. and and I was just like, I want to get my name down. I didn't want to lose out on this opportunity. Um, yeah. So, um, I, I'd like to also ask you, you know, now we, we're we're taking a look at the watches, but. Um, after you come down and you put you put pen to paper and you have a design, um, what is the next step? Like you know, how do you how do we go from there to actually start working on a prototype, uh, a physical, tangible uh, watch? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the first step after the pencil and paper, I'm uh, quite good in Photoshop, <laughs> so I bring the, the the watch in a digital format first of all and um yeah play around with some 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 software there uh to make it really from 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 an abstract sketch to a yeah, to a digital uh, format and to make it more like uh tangible that you can really see how would this look because pencil and paper is only gray and white and then the next step i i did was to bring it in into colors and uh, yeah, to play around with uh, just standard Photoshop, to be honest. I'm not sure. I think there are also some other watch design software out there, but that's how I started. Yeah. Uh, as a one-man show, this is what what I had, my weapons, and <laughs> so I need go then for that. And the next step is then, uh, or was, that I already had a, a partner in, in Pforzheim, so this is uh, 60 kilometers from here, Stuttgart, and there, as you, as you know, there's a a watch industry like Lacos from there, uh, mm -hmm. Stobark right close, and uh, there's some micro brands, Circular now. Um, yeah, there's a quite a traditional watch industry there, a city, but yeah, also it was quite big in the yeah, 70s, but of course, a declining market, I would say. But there are still, of course, some, 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 some famous historical brands out there, so um. I worked with them already for my first project, so this was uh, not a big issue then for me to to do a research on partners and so. So I, I had uh, had the benefit to to already had a good partner uh, with me um, who can do the yeah the, bring this into into a CAD format like yeah like a, a CD image yeah. so a CAD drawing a construction drawing what I had in mind. Yeah. And yeah, um, 
then um, I also went out in parallel for sourcing suppliers because uh, we can maybe also talk about that, but I'm quite open with this. Um, Germany, made in Germany uh, parts are not all made in Germany, <laughs> as okay. you might be aware. Uh, also, like if you buy a Swiss made brand, there's only 60%, uh, yeah, not all of them, not the Rolex, but if you go in the segment of below 2000 euros, so you don't find Swiss made parts only in, in, in your watch. And the same goes right. with these German uh, watches. So, in parallel, I started. Uh, the research on suppliers on a global scale and uh, yeah as maybe it's also not a secret for, for watch nerds but uh, you find them mostly in in Asia or, yeah. uh, to be honest in Hong Kong mm -hmm. <laughs> to give it a name and uh, there are plenty of suppliers and they promise you the world and uh, this is really challenging promises uh, but uh, yeah, that's how it is, and there are really good suppliers, uh, I must say, but I also had, of course, several experiences, not so good ones. So, yeah, that, that, that is more challenging than, than the actual design. <laughs> right. uh, it really took a while that you find the right partner, and uh, yeah, from there you can start your prototypes. It really sounds simple, but yeah, it took me, I think, from sketch to prototype, uh, it took me, I think, nine months or ten wow. months because I also do this as a side job, and yeah, and you have a lot of emails writing, forcing back, and so on. So this is maybe not the most fun part, but if you see then the prototype live in your hands at some point, then it's uh, then you are back on track again and passionate to bring this <laughs> out to the world if you like it, of course, hopefully. Yeah. But I, I I liked it a lot, uh, the the end result, and yeah, then. At the end, then you can go really into the marketing if you feel confident with the quality and so on. And then you, uh, yeah, you, you the next step comes with the Kickstarter uh, campaign. But this is also a topic on its own, uh, a project on its own. But yeah, if you have the first prototypes, then you are quite in a good state already. I must say the challenging part is more the, the one which people don't see. <laughs> Uh, before you bring it live, there's quite a lot of uh, big process behind it. Yeah. Right, sure. So, so it if you post it the first time on Instagram and <laughs> they don't know that this is uh, maybe a one year process uh, in front before that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, look, I mean, like I said, this was like the first time I've ever gotten involved. So I really wasn't, I mean, I've, I am, I was aware of plenty of Kickstarters out there. I just didn't realize the amount of work that goes in preparing before that uh you know I, I i've never developed a watch before i never took an idea and and went through the whole process and and like you have um to get there even before you can put an image and put in social media so um this is like i said this is the first time i'm, I'm involved in one and uh and so it, it is it is a lesson uh, not only for you as the creator, but also uh, for for a buyer uh, to, because I've heard some stories where it just doesn't work out. You know, the the Kickstarter campaign just dies or something like that. But fortunately mm -hmm. for you, it, it it seems like it's a, a a very big success. And and I wanted uh, to show some of the people on the chat who are unfamiliar. Uh, you know, a little bit of a breakdown. And and thanks again, uh, Wolfgang, for providing uh, some of these marketing materials. Um, but you know, we do let's let's talk about what's in the watch. Um, and I think uh, that's what a lot of people want to know. And uh, and we could start with uh, with the movement, as you said. You know, you know, there's going to be parts that are not necessarily German parts. We we understand what made in Germany is. It's it's a promise. It's 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 a it's a it's a quality thing. But that uh, there are parts from around the world that are possible, just like with Swiss made watches. Um, and so we do have a Swiss made Salida SW uh, 200. Which I find like a, an interesting choice, um, you know, because you will see, and 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 we can get into the discussion with micro brands, and as well as what's going on with micro brands in Germany. You're 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 you had explained to me before we started how, you know, it's it's there's a lot of good stuff that's coming out of Germany, um, but a lot of micro brands I, I I feel like are are trending towards like Miota movements now, or they'll do an NH35 with their first out of the gate um uh model 
you know, you you jumped into to Salida, which I'm very very happy that you did. Um, what's I, I I imagine that in a if in an ideal world you may have gone ETA, but because of the the issue of getting ETA, it's harder. So Salida was a good option for you. Um, did you try to go the ETA route? Did you try ETA at first? Uh, no, no, actually not. But yeah, yes, you said is these are hard to get, of course, because they uh, they keep it only for their friends, the Swatch Group and stuff. And yeah, so uh, this was never an idea because yeah, the Salita is more like. Uh, yeah, uh, a good alternative to the AT ETA is because it's the same movement at the end. Um, and Celita is more for me the, the more uh, <laughs> the, the better company for 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 micro brand because mm -hmm. they really uh, support you uh, to to they help you with the movement supply and um, it's yeah it's the, it's the same movement as a ETA. Um, but yeah, as you said, you're completely right. Most micro brands when go for Miota or Seiko movement with their first model. And yeah, I really did hear something uh, different than, than others because yeah, this was also a bit risky because um, Miota or Seiko movement inside this one is, of course, the watch would be uh, cheaper, uh, mm -hmm. I would say, quite a bit. But uh, since I want to go really for yeah, high quality piece, I, I couldn't, not that the Myota or Seiko is a bad movement, but I couldn't, <laughs> from the constant point of view, go with, with one of these. So uh, yeah, I just, there was only one option and this was the Celita SW200 in a standard version. And uh, this is a great movement. Um, and it's fitted perfectly to to my watch concept and to the to the Taucher, I must say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there was never a question, but uh, it was also, of course, the, the makes the watch more expensive. Uh, yeah. Not only. You know, you know. So. Are you are you are you are you at this point? You're you know this is your first um, launch. I mean, you're you're not doing any modification to this movement, right? I mean, it's just you're very low. Yeah, anyway. I wanted to, to customize the rotor a bit, um, mm -hmm. which I could have done, but uh, yeah. yeah, I don't see a benefit. Of course, it's nice, but if you have a closed case back, then uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's it would look even more more better, but you don't open the, the watch so often, and I really focused more on a nice case back. Yeah. Because it's a dark watch, it doesn't have a class. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, class uh, if it's open, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, exhibit, yeah, exhibit uh, exhibition uh, yeah. case back. So this is not possible for two hundred. Well, it is possible for, but yeah, it's, I wanted to keep it vintage and seventies, and these watches never had a, a open case. Right, back. right, exactly. Yeah, they were they were they were meant they were tool watches. They were meant to you know yeah, have exactly a function. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, so, another, yeah. another thing I really like about, um, I, I like that 70s style case um, that you have here. You could definitely see that influence there, the K shape. Um, I really think this this bracelet is very interesting. Um, do you, can you walk mm -hmm. us through uh, the choice here? Uh, because I really, I really love this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really, I also want, of course, not only finish the watch with a is a 70s case and dial, so I really searched a long time for some design, 70s design, and this is also like you see the place that it fits perfectly, I think, to the to the overall watch design. And I, uh, as you can see, it's like an integrated bracelet, so it's quite edgy here in the at the lux, and uh, it really fits perfectly. There's there's no gap there in between. This was quite challenging in the, in the manufacturing wow. process. This went forth and back and so on. So, uh, but I, uh, I don't like gaps in the, in the integrated bracelet. So, of course, yeah. Um, of course, you can see a, a small gap, but uh, tolerance should be very, very low there. And yeah, and yeah, the bracelet itself, it's really, it's, a, it's not a hair puller, so as it looks, so it really wears comfortable. I must say, it's not marketing speech now. So, this really wears cool. I tried a lot of uh bracelets on this watch and this one really 
feels the, the best on the wrist because I also have hairy wrist as you can see here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I have a good example that uh, I don't produce any help pullers and this bracelet is comfy. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> and fits, of course, the style, yeah. I, I love, I like the, uh, the no crown guards on the, uh, uh -huh. the uh, on the crown. Very, very vintage look. Um, you have that Swiss Super Luminova BGW9 and that cream color. So you get that kind of like that faux vintage look that, that I, I mean, I have, I own a Black Bay 58 and I just love that vintage look on a modern watch without the vintage uh -huh. headaches. You know what I mean? Um, so uh -huh. um, another reason why, uh, I'm very, very attracted to to this release is because of because of that for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Here's that case back that you were talking about. Um, really, really well done. I um, and, and we'll see some images um, and soon, but this wave pattern, you you kind of see that again on this watch, um, and in a very interesting spot. And I'm and um, and I'm very, very interested to see when I get it in person, and 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 we'll we'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, I like how you did the um, the quick release here. Um, mm -hmm. They will be they will be removed, but yeah. They... Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I only I, I only go for twill plugs uh, because okay. Uh, you don't need quick release. This was for the first prototype. Uh, gotcha. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Can easily uh, change this strap, uh, the bracelet with, with the uh, thrill plugs here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Under, under, under. Sometimes this, this, the quick release causes some pain, and uh, yeah, it's have... quite narrow there. As you can see, the lugs are pretty yeah. short, and uh, I, I wanted to avoid some issues. And the thrill plugs, so uh, it's quite easy. You go in with the pin, and you can change it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah, that's that's fine. So this is where that curved pattern comes in, and mm -hmm. I I've never seen anything like this on the edge of a bezel, and uh, and I saw a couple of videos. So like you know, um, Axel and Random Rob and and Beans and Bezel. Those are the three um, channels that I saw do reviews on this, and and they did have the prototype, right? So the, of course there's going to be yeah. some more fine tuning afterwards. Um, but uh, it didn't seem like they had any issues, uh, as far as I can remember, um, with getting a, a, a grip on this. And uh, and it looks like it's knurled aggressively, uh, but you have this wavy pattern in there. And I just think this is uh, this like details like this uh, um, really make this really exciting to me, you know. And uh, and so it's and so how did you come up with this? Uh, yeah, I mean, waves and diver watches, uh, yeah. It's something which which comes together. Right, <laughs> you, sure. about, you think about the, the sea and uh, about, uh, about diving, and so uh, of course Omega also did some some things in this area with with waves and so on the dial. But this is not what I wanted. But yeah, waves uh, on a on a bezel that uh, on a, on a, yeah. as you can see here, this was never done before as as far as I know. I, I hope so. So this makes it quite unique. Absolutely. And uh, what I want to avoid, of course, is that yet they don't have a grip on it. Uh, so you see the, the heavily knurled vessel there. But of course, then uh, it was also a bit uh, surprising for my manufacturing partner that, that I wanted this. <laughs> uh, because, yeah, of course, they said avoid this and this doesn't look good and stuff. So, uh, but I really. Needed to persuade that they manufacture it like that with two ways on the, on the bezel, and uh, at the end, it's, it has a great grip, I, I must say, and you don't feel the ways, but it gives it a pretty good detail from the side, as you can see here, and uh, together with the brush case, the straight brush case, and uh, the polishing part before the bezel, bezel starts here, so uh, this gives it a cool, a cool look. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, great, and great. So the waves were uh, yeah, part of this idea, so I wanted to go also bring it back on the on the case back, of course, to to have some uh, identity here to Toho and to diving, and yeah, to to make the the, the design complete. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it's like little touches like that, Wolfgang, that that make this really really appealing. Anyway, for me, and I'm sure it's appealing to a lot of people. Um, I I love that continuation of the neural in the crown. Um, 
uh, and then you have um, a, a line here. And is is that did, did you tell or did I read somewhere? Is that like a family crest of yours, the line, or is that? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the crest is uh, like the region where I come from from Stuttgart oh, okay. in Germany. So uh, the crest is for for our region looks a bit different, but we have three lines instead of one. But uh, so this is a reminiscence to 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 my region here in Germany. And I think on the Kickstarter campaign page, you can see a one-to-one -one comparison how the real quest looks <laughs> uh, and uh, how my logo looks. So this was the inspiration for, for my logo, yeah. Yeah. And I think I, it's, uh, it's good because it's, yeah, it's also masculine. <laughs> I wanted to have a really masculine watch and uh, the line is always uh, perfect for that and fit perfectly to, to my home base here. And yeah, I was I'm really happy with that logo. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. And there's there's also another hint of uh, 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 of local influence in your dial with that second hand, and, and I'll show that uh, soon. But uh, I, I just love how the, you have the neural on the bezel and on the crown. Uh, it, it seems like it's, it flows very well. And then you have the ways and it flows down to the, the, the bracelet and the lines on the bracelet. I mean, I know these are not wavy um, when you see it straightforward. Um, but uh, it just seems like it's just a well thought out um, piece, and I, you know, kudos. And I, and it sounds like you know this is uh, I'm uh, I'm giving you all the all the all the all the hype, uh, but I think you deserve it. I mean, I think this is a great looking watch. And um, uh, so, okay, but it's also polarizing. But uh, so not yeah. everyone likes it like you, right. but I'm I'm happy that you like it. Uh, also, the big crown was a bit, uh, yeah. Not everyone likes such a big crown because it's much bigger than a usual crown. But, but if you look at some yeah, always big crown, this was my my inspiration for yeah. to have a big or really 70s style crown. And yeah, it's also more co con uh, convenient to to operate if you have a bigger crown. But of course, it's not everyone's taste. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, absolutely, and and I do like the big crown. It does give me that vintagey feel. I, I'll I'll take a big crown, and then you have the class, and you and you. And initially, you had the um, the uh, the um, what do you call it? The extension, the wetsuit extension, the uh, the glide kind of extension. Fiber and, extension. Fiber extension, yeah. Yeah, and then you added. Um, and and another good thing, guys, um, on the chat is that you know Wolfgang listens to to people, so he listens to to his prospective buyers and buyers, and uh, and so there were some changes here. And uh, you and I don't have any images of it, but but you did do a class system on on the on on the back here as well. You gave um, the option of of doing like this glide extension as well as a regular uh, class position that you see with other divers, which I which we appreciate as well. Um, uh, because some some people don't like the big diver extension class. I mean, I mean, it's quite convenient in the summer, not if you go diving, but if your hands get bigger, then you can. Uh, Quite easily uh, enlarge the bracelet. Yeah, and, uh, this is diver extension. But some people, for for some people, it's more bulky, and so I tried to listen here and uh, offering us uh, alternative V class, which is a bit thinner and smaller, and not so bulky, but has also the logo on it. And, yeah. It's a matter of choice. Yeah, and so and so here here are the options, and you actually um, throughout the the last few months have added. A couple of more color combinations, and I uh, and I alluded before a nod to I think it's Stuttgart, right? You, there is a tower that has this um, the red and white and red uh, tip seconds. So you you threw that on there as a, as a nod to to your city, and uh, and I thought that was very very cool. Second hand, second hand looks yeah. like a TV tower from Stuttgart, but nobody noticed. But it's just a, like an Easter egg. Which I wanted to bring in, and only locals here <laughs> in my town notice. But yeah, it's no. I think I think that's cool. Mr. Mr. Marcus, Mr. Red and White, and uh, yeah. It's, it's, and 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 so and so you also listen to your. Uh, I, I would imagine some of your prospective uh, uh, buyers, and you go, went with a, a more of a white um, indices as well. So you gave the option of the the vintage, creamy. Um, indices and uh, and you went also with with white. Um, so so good on you for 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 doing that. 
Um, but these colors are, 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 all, are all very, very uh, awesome. I, I, when I saw this one here, the gray, um, I, I started second thinking the, uh, the, the green. And, uh, and I think I, 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 uh, I posted something uh, or responded to one of your posts and then you were like, oh, just get both of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one at a time, man. I don't want to. I don't want to overextend myself. I got, so many, I got so much feedback about that. I don't know what to choose now, but yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> that yeah. yeah. It's like when you go to a restaurant and they give you too much on the menu. Like I, you know, yeah. I mean, I, sometimes I appreciate when there's less on the menu because uh, I can make a choice a lot easier. But no, these are all all just fantastic um, choices and, uh, and 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 what a great uh, looking uh, collection here. So. Um, Wolfgang, what was what was the hardest part here? I mean, I, I know we know what's going on in the world right now with um, with this uh, with quarantine and whatnot. Did that did that affect your timeline much? Um, uh, okay, now I'm for the Kickstarter campaign, not of course, because I had the prototypes and mm -hmm. this was the basis for the for the Kickstarter campaign. But now the real work starts going into production and so. Yeah. I hope I, I I don't have any delays with the project, so I wanted to deliver end of May, uh, 2021. So in a few months. So far, yeah, I don't see a risk, but uh, you never know. The world changes so quickly at these days. So uh, yeah, but it's, right now I can say I'm confident to manage end of uh, end of May, and yeah, this is still the goal. But Excellent. yeah. Excellent. Um, I, I, I'm pulling up your Kickstarter campaign. So if you guys um, who are on the chat want, I mean, it's Heinrich uh, Heinrich.watch. I'm able to get on this one. I couldn't get on your other uh, one for some reason. Um, but you can. Uh, uh, you, click, uh, you click. You want to go to the campaign or? Uh, the yeah, campaign? yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I have it. I have it. I'm just going on the website right now. Um, okay. And uh, obviously in English here. Um, but uh, great, great, great designed website. I really, really appreciate that. A lot of information. This is that other class that I was talking about. This is actually the one I I changed my order and I and I got this one. I, I do like the fold over class. I don't know why. I just do. Um, yeah. it, it's it's just a matter of preference. And I'm glad you 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 gave us that choice. Um, very very transparent in what is going on. Um, in the watch itself, which is, of course, very, very appreciative, uh, appreciate that very much. Um, and then uh, we can go into the quick, quick um, Kickstarter campaign, and here you go. Um, now the pricing, um, there was an early bird, and there still is, right? There's still an early bird um, uh, for Kickstarter, or no? I mean, Kickstarter is over now since. Okay. Uh, middle, you know, oh. it, uh, Early December, Kickstarter right. is closed, so uh, the campaign ran 14 days, something. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, as you can see, it's yeah, 70k euro and 122 supporters from all around the world. Actually, 50% coming from Germany, but second is the US, <laughs> uh, with around 25%, and uh, from the UK, a lot of people, Australia, uh, and all over Europe. So I'm really happy to to deliver the Tauro to all over the world. So it's really cool, not only Germany. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, spread the spread the word. Um, the early bird was around 6:43 US, and and now uh, for this is for the US crowd that was who, who will be watching. It's 8:69 going forward, I, I believe. Yeah, that's what it says here. So. Um, Really, really awesome stuff, um, Wolfgang. Um, really appreciate it. And now you you were mentioning before we started that there is like you know some good micro brands coming out of Germany, and 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 it seems like you know hopefully you're going to be part of that. Uh, what's going on in Germany? You know we have all these high end brands that um, that us in the U S that we know about. We know Zinn as well. We know Damasco, but what other what other micros out there that that that, that you're seeing that are doing good work in Germany. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely there is now some, also some, some uh, micro brands coming up, um, mm -hmm. but, but not so many, but it's nice to see that I'm part of, of one of the first ones. 
If you can look at the microcran market, you see a lot of uh, microcrans from Singapore right now, like Celos and yeah. uh, Vario, and uh, yeah, these are the bigger ones. But there's a lot of Singapore brands <laughs> which do a really good job and they look great and so on. So uh, that was also my uh, idea to also bring something from Germany, and this was the ambition to to not let the Singapore guys, hello there, uh, <laughs> cover the microbrand market, but also come up with some from based out of Germany. And uh, yeah, there are some, like maybe you heard about Circular, which is also mm-hmm. a top based brand, but is not I'm not sure about if you call it a microbrand. They have quite a, a history behind them, but now they, uh, yeah, there's a new. Uh, uh, the son of the of the founder here has has taken up the, the company and circular has has now a, a dive watch out and uh, so yeah i would call them also still a micro brand maybe he, he does not mind to call them like that right. and there's also Fanda Vandek, if you heard about them this is also german micro brand um, which are go into the direction of aviator watches and they also look really cool. They are more like simplistic Bauhaus style, but still uh, tool watches. So there's quite a good mixture there. Uh, there's ESA watches also based from Pforzheim, which you maybe not heard of, but mm. also quite a small one, one man show with some partners behind it. So uh, also really nice to, to, to look at them. Uh, there's Stand class, which you may have heard, but these are not tool watches, but also uh, quite Bauhaus inspired, but I really like this brand because uh, yeah, they are they start in my opinion were one of the first micro brands in Germany mm-hmm. starting uh, six years ago or so. And then you of course know Steinhardt, uh, I'm sure, uh, which yep. is a German, not a micro brand anymore, but they do they put the Swiss made label on mm-hmm. it, but. Headquarter is uh, not far from, from from here, and this is a German brand. Yeah, but they play a bit more like in the Swiss made market. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, they are quite huge already, and they, in my opinion, focus primarily on, on creating submarine homages. Yeah, but they also they have some 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 other models. So but this is more like already mass market and mainstream, uh, not micro brand anymore. And what else is there? Davosa. Maybe you heard of also mm-hmm. Swiss, Swiss brand, but also based in Germany, which people maybe don't know sometimes. There's Dekla from Stuttgart. Uh, these are really professional case manufacturers. Yeah. And, yeah. So there's a lot of going so on. There's, so there's, there's a lot going on in Germany, it sounds like, which is great because, you know, if you asked me about two or three years ago, anything about German watches, I really had no idea. So I'm excited. Now, before we 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 wrap things up, I want to know what. So when this Kickstarter is so the Kickstarter is done, when you when you send out the watches, when you send out your last diver, what is next for Heinrich watches? I'm already working in parallel on on the next model, of course. Um, so doing the same uh, process again, starting with sketching on paper, which I have now a few already on paper and also created some first designs um yeah is it a diver or is it going to be other is it going to be something else or you don't want to say uh, yeah i mean there's one diver in my mind but also some more press sports watch so yeah. at the end i i didn't decide yet to 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 which one i i go to but i have yeah, different segments in my mind yeah uh, but for sure there will be something, uh, but I cannot give you a date. I hope by end of the year I have my first prototypes in hands and well, then I can show something. Um, but yeah, you never know uh, due to the current situation what, what's happening. But I, of course, want to continue with the brand and uh, slowly start uh, yeah, to, to establish uh, yeah, a, a nice brand out of Germany. So I definitely don't want to finish it with the Taufer here. Yeah. Uh, I also have some idea to to uh, yeah play around with the existing design a bit and yeah, so plenty in my head, but uh, nothing on 
uh, to speak about. On paper, I have some syntax. Yeah, first, uh, the focus is really on the on the best delivery of the of the Kickstarter campaign, and then I hoping to get more traction and more awareness because people have it in their hands and it's not so it's more tangible for them. And Absolutely. I hope that the community uh, is happy and this is the focus. And uh, then they also post photos out of it, and uh, from there I, I want to create more awareness because I'm a one man show. Uh, still, <laughs> compared to Sin or yeah. <laughs> one, uh, no one. So uh, yeah, I'm humble, and <laughs> I just want to. Uh, I'm. It's it's a side job, so I'm not. Uh, I need don't need to live out of this. So I really want to focus on quality and uh, thing up, come up with my own ideas. And the nice thing is, I don't get influenced by others. Not like in a, in a normal job, where you. Plenty of hierarchies and bosses, so here this is quite a good, <laughs> uh, how do you say, a balance between a normal job and uh, yeah, a hobby. Yeah. That's it, that's excellent, and and I love I love hearing that from you, Wolfgang, and I'm so excited. I can't wait. Um, hopefully everything goes right, and by the end of the May, you're and you're able to send these these watches out, and I can't wait to get one in my hands. Um, I will be sure to. To uh, to you know review it and 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 whatnot. Um, very excited. I, I love the product. Um, I can't wait to see it. And and I and I so grateful that you were able to come on today, and talk us through, um, uh, letting us know like uh, what goes on the, with this whole process of starting uh, a brand from scratch, uh, coming up with the design, going through the process of working with the supply chain, uh, and to get this out um, to market it. It is way more than I thought it ever was, um, and to do it basically by yourself um, with some help on the way, but mostly yourself is and having a family and a day job. You know, it's pretty, pretty amazing, um, Wolfgang. You know, before we um, sign off, is there anything else that you want to say um, before we sign off? Um, and uh, and oh, I'm sorry, before you say that, I will have uh, Hi um, Wolfgang's uh, website for Hinder Watches on the description. Please follow him on Instagram uh, and on Facebook. Um, Wolfgang, yeah. I'll, I'll let you have the last word. Yeah, no, thanks for having me and great feedback from you. I really like <laughs> what you said, of course, and that, that it appeals, uh, the design is uh, pleasant. And yeah, I really hope to, to deliver a good product. Uh, trying everything and yeah, there's a lot of challenges always but yeah I try to to not speak about that but <laughs> uh, yeah it's really thanks for for having me here is there any questions in the in the chat or yeah I think follow? I think uh, uh, I think people were uh, were really interested in 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 your color selection um, mm -hmm. Kevin is saying best of luck with Heimrich watches the product um, yeah okay. uh, but uh, but you know it was your show and then i'm happy to to let you have a forum please maybe after the release um in may if everything goes well maybe uh, if you want come back on and then we can talk a little bit more about how how that went um because i'm sure i would love to know and i'm sure a lot of people on the chat would love to know um wolfgang thanks again guys thank you for for coming in in the chat you can always refer to this video um, at any time you want. Please check out Wolfgang's uh, brand's website, the uh, Heinrich Watches, Heinrich uh, dot Watches dot Watch, I believe, um, and uh, and click on that Kickstarter campaign. Order yourself some a watch, please. Um, yeah, you, you. I think you'll be happy. Anyway, guys, have a good evening, and we'll talk soon. Take care. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye bye.